Hello everyone and welcome to the Confident Parent Summit. My name is Keelan Siobhan Clark and today I have with me Lori Petro, which I'm really excited to speak about. She is a child advocate um, and also has creative tools that she has instilled in helping um, with sensitive children. So we're going to talk about those pieces, but a little more about Lori. Um, as I said, Lori Petro is a child advocate, certified parent educator, and mom. You'll see her kid's beautiful artwork right behind her as we, as we get into the interview. She founded Teach Through Love as a vehicle to help families heal multi-generational cycles of abuse and traumas by providing parents with tools, and definitely creative tools, uh, for communicating and creating strong relationships with kids. And as an adult with Asperger's, Lori understands uh, the demands of parenting kids with special needs and the kids who are definitely sensitive. So welcome, Lori. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi. Hi, Keelan. Thank you for inviting me. I love your rainbow. I love your background. Oh, Makes me happy. <laughs> Yay. I love it. So, you know, we've got a couple of things going on here. Um, I'd love to talk about you your childhood experience with Asperger's and, you know, as, as being an adult as well, um, and then kind of get into how you have um, come into your life purpose as, you know, a parenting coach. Sure. So I, I mean, I like to think of myself mostly as a highly sensitive person. I feel like when I use, I don't know, and especially it's been um, Asperger's is now under the whole autism spectrum. And not that I'm denying it, but I feel like the labels we get, we automatically start making like judgments in our heads. And stuff. Yeah. And I didn't actually know I was on the spectrum until I was about 38. And it sort of just um, happened by accident. And my dad is very s sort of stereotypical male um, Asperger's, which was made it a little bit easier to recognize, but I've actually come, actually I shouldn't say this, I really have come to love um, helping people understand what makes people on the spectrum tick, but also highly sensitive people and kids with trauma and kids who we label as ODD and ADHD or ADD, like all of these labels, no matter what they are, for me, understanding what's motivating those behaviors has become sort of my mission and what I, what my childhood and being misunderstood because there was, there weren't these labels really when I was growing up because it just wasn't known or that many people that um, ran into it. But my mom recognized for her, it felt like I didn't show any emotion. I couldn't communicate. I was very aggressive. I was very sensitive to foods. And so I was sensitive to foods and chemicals um, I couldn't, she didn't, I was full of emotion, but she didn't see it. And it, mm -hmm. it seemed like I had like no personality to her because I couldn't express myself. Um, I found having conversations and make, and, and establishing relationships really difficult. So somehow all of that being misunderstood led me to <laughs> have a career in talking about relationships and communication, mm -hmm. which is funny how I know that. I don't even, I didn't know any of that. I wasn't aware of any of that, but I really struggled with relationships, with being, with feeling understood and just trying to make sense out of my childhood. Cause I always had just this seeking quality about, you know, search for truth, my truth, everybody's truth, reality. You know, I was just that kind of personality that was, a, um, was seeking and I was trying to understand the environment that I grew up in. And that's what led me to create Teach Through Love. Um, it really didn't have a purpose except for advocacy and, and getting the word out about how we can change the way we speak and um, putting shining a light on verbal abuse. I think mm -hmm. that physical abuse, there's other kinds of abuse that get more attention. And so verbal abuse, emotional abuse is what I was focusing on and what felt and they're sort of underlying all of those abuses, yeah. even if they just exist alone. But nobody was really paying attention to, but abuse sounded so hard and harsh, right? People didn't want to think that they were abusing their kids. So that was when I sort of put out this, set this intention to really find a way, like, what am I trying to express? What is my mission? What am I supposed to do with Teach Through Love? I was actually writing a story about a family 
And then I had got pregnant with my daughter and she was a surprise. My husband and I weren't planning on children actually. And it was like, oh, and then I realized how very much that parenting journey was going to be connected to what I do now. And that's how I got here, um, making sense of my childhood and then finding that helping families um, learn to communicate and helping actually just kids feel understood by their parents and helping parents understand kids. And yeah. The kitty crawling. Oh, my kitty. <laughs> <sighs> Lock the kitty out. I want to be the star as well. <laughs> so that that's how it came to be. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And you know, one of the things um, that that I want to link to is using your creativity to link all of this. So you're actually writing a story. Did you finish the story? I do. I have a full length, um, feature length script that I did finish. I don't. I always dream one day that I'll have time to go back to it because it's it's in a very rough draft form when I think about it even though it seemed so polished to me then um I do have a script about a family and it's so funny that there are things in that script that have actually happened to like I've watched them happen out in my real life which is not to me but to it's very weird so I feel like one day that might actually you know um surface and i wrote it when i before i was a parent and right so looking back at, at at my understanding of children it's just so interesting you know what we think whether we have ex if, before we really have experience with children even though i had been a teacher and you know had worked with children and, and families it wasn't in the same way so yeah. yes i do have that script. that was my i'm sorry that was my long answer <laughs> I, I love it I though back to that script one day it's about writing our futures, right? And you know, you're like, oh wow, I, I wrote about that and that's happening. So it's coming true. Can we talk about the cards? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So do you want me to talk about them or do you want yeah. to do anything? So I made these cards. These are my conscious communication cards. I don't know if you can put these on the screen, but here's an example of just Yeah, just lift it right up. Awesome. Yeah. And so these cards are sort of my little communication cheat sheets. And there are 40, in this deck, I created this deck. One day I was just writing, and it didn't look like this initially. I was just writing things that we normally say that are filled with the blame, shame, judgment, guilt, under this whole like fear umbrella that we sometimes use to speak to people, not even just parent, but speak to anybody. Right and we have conflict and we run and we just use all this evaluative language and this judgmental language. And people would say, I would have clients that would, you know, say, get all the theory. I get the idea behind conscious parenting. I want to be empathetic. I want to be all these things. But when you're faced with like a screaming three-year-old or a very belligerent 15 year old, it's very hard to find the language because we're triggered in the moment. And so, you know, there's a lot of practice that goes into that, but also just having the language. We didn't grow up talking about our feelings in, in ways that um, enabled us to express what we wanted and how we felt without putting the blame on other people or without um, judging what someone was doing or making them responsible for our feelings and all of these kinds of ideas. So I just made an example and I posted it on Facebook. And they just became a thing that, I, that people loved with these reframes, yeah. so shifting the language. So I would write four, you know, it's just like take a little scenario. So on this one, it's um, example is be careful. And they're color coded. So there's, um, I do everything when I, I frame it through this lens of support, stress, skills. Okay. So whenever we have behavior challenge or conflicts, we can look at what is the root cause? And it's always going to be one or some combination of these things. Support, my child needs connection, relationship. Stress, they need regulation, co-regulation or sensory tool. They're, they're stressed beyond their capacity to cope. Or skills, they're just frustrated because they're working on a skill that they don't have. And do you find that that can be, that can be applied to parents as well? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think everything kind of comes down. So do we need relationship? Are we feeling stressed or are we frustrated because we don't know how to do something? Mm -hmm. So even if we do have skills, there's always, you know, maybe it's something that we're working on. Maybe we're back in school or maybe we're working on trying to get a promotion or we're trying to, you know, build a business or we're 
trying to homeschool our children and we're and organizing you know a year's worth of lessons to present to the state might feel really overwhelming and we might feel alone and we might not feel like we have the skills right so we can always point to what what we're feeling and what's going on to one of those three areas so i color coded the cards to match orange represents when we're having and these are just examples right it can be a combination but orange represents when we're having a regulation a stress challenge and, and how we can focus on helping kids regulate the stress purple is the relationship when we're working on building connection and then green, the green cards are for examples of when kids are ha mm. uh, struggling with skills. Yeah. So they're co color coded in that way. So just on the top section, it tells us the common language that we usually use. So for this example, um, you know, we might say, be careful to a kid, mm -hmm. right? Now that seems like very, like what's wrong with be careful? But imagine if you're little and you hear that all the time and then suddenly you just, you know, it sort of alerts your stress response system. Yeah. And then kids be careful here, it, to the point where it, it, it limits, it's a self limiting belief as opposed to, you know, be careful. It, with, growth, in your exactly. Like a growth experience. Right. Yeah. So we're, we kind of miss the ability to teach in those moments. Now, obviously this does not mean that you can never say, be careful to a child. Right. Just habitual language and a way to shift it. It's um, all life is about a delicate balance, right? Like exactly. it's just that very, very delicate balance. Exactly. And there's 15, there's 45 cards in this deck. So there's okay. lots of different examples. You know, what's wrong with you? Um, because I said so. That's another really good one. That's so a good one. Through, I remember my mom saying that one. Right? Because what? I said so is just because it's easy. It's like my authority. Um, so what we want to try to do is avoid dismissing. So I'm not changing my mind just because someone else is doing it, right? We right. haven't heard that or even maybe felt compelled to say it. So the top part gives us the things that we normally say. And then the bottom, it doesn't just give us the language to shift. It also gives us what I call my stage direction. So this is the, the what you want to go in with this attitude, right? It's this shift in uh, perception, it's this mind shift that we make besides the language, because the language, maybe the, the language on the card doesn't exactly fit. Right. But instead of um, dismissing our children, we can set compassionate limits. So we can say, you know, as much as you disagree, I'm not changing my mind. We can just say it really neutrally instead of um, in this aggressive sort of dismissing way. Right. So it's a way to just, so we set compassionate limits. That's the, the reframe um, of the dismissing or acknowledge feelings, mm -hmm. validate needs, and then empathy plus um, help your child regulate stress. That's quality feedback. So the idea is to give kids quality feedback about their behavior. So some of the languages, I know it's upsetting um, you don't like my decision. You think this is unfair. Tell me more. You know, sometimes kids just want to be able to express that they're frustrated. They don't need you to change your limit, but we feel like threatened. Like I'm not changing my limit. As much as you disagree, I'm not changing my limit. Right. You know what? You can say like, I hear that you disagree with this. This feels unfair to you. I'm not willing to change my decision, but tell me more about what this feels like for you. Right. I want to it opens the door to root cause analysis. And opens the door to just connection, making kids feel safe sharing with us. Yeah, um, and more communication. You know, I'm sorry, say that? And more communication. Yeah, like letting kids know how you feel is important to me. What your idea is saying to that, them, your ideas are important to me. I'm not changing my limit. I have a, you know, it's my responsibility to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Whatever the, the real responsibility is. But I want to hear more about why this is frustrating for you. And I'm going to try to help break through that. So it's about help building emotional intelligence. It's about giving kids the language to speak about their feelings, um, allowing them to mess up as they learn to do it. Because being skilled at speaking about our feelings or changing uh, the way we deal with conflict or under stress is not like an automatic thing. It's something that kids develop slowly throughout childhood. Right. So even when they're 15 and we think they, you know, they should know better, 
we have to remember that 15 year old brain is undergoing you know reconstruction Man. Of reconstruction yeah in 15 years you know just to, they're not it's a not it's not a finished brain they're very immature and they're very they can be very quick um, to perceive things as uh, or to perceive even our guidance as an attack on the yeah. wall um, and so that doesn't mean that we walk on eggshells it just means that we have some tolerance and some compassion yeah. for their inability to you know meet their needs in better ways Right. The cards are, that's what they do. They help us just find language, but also make that shift in perception. How can I look at the situation differently so that I can say something differently? Yeah, and I'm really inspired by them, and I keep bringing them up because I think that as adults, we can use them too in our relationships because, um, you know, the, the country has a bit of a communication problem, um, and there's so much communication that it's almost overwhelming. And that kind of takes me into our conversation that we started before I started recording was, you know, let's talk about the Facebook response to your, uh, to your cards. So as parents, um, we are um, kind of, as adults even, we're under kind of a microscope and we're so judgmental of ourselves, I feel like, sometimes, yeah. that, you know, we're, we're on the defensive a lot. So, um, you know, we're... Which is great, <laughs> but with your cards, you have to a little bit of, what's that? We just don't really have the language either. Yeah. Like we get so defensive, we feel like what else, I mean, if we don't know what to say or do in those situations, we're not really able to see it from another person's point of view, I think. And there, yeah. there is a lot of that out in society, out in, and I think the, the access to um, immediate information, like it makes it more known. I feel like we've always been in this, you know, rut of communication for lack of a better um, way to describe it, but really not being able to express ourselves for a long time. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, when you're evoking emotion, whether it's negative or positive, you know, you know, you're making a change. So um, what, what kind of response did you get with the cards? Do you, do you want to talk about that? Oh, you mean the recent ex response? Yeah. Well, I've been posting these for a long time. Um, and there was, the reason I, we made them and I did Kickstarter to make them was originally because people loved using them. But then I've been, I've been posting them for several years now. Um, but just recently I um, was trying to post because I post every Monday. And they were reported to Facebook as abusive. <laughs> So, somebody got sick of seeing them, I guess. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, but the upside was that I made little videos about it, which I, so I could go through the card, and it just provides a little deeper explanation than somebody just reading it. I mean, they're great to read as well, and, and people, um, you can certainly purchase them, and we're going to offer any, your, your audience a discount, I know. Um, but you can, watching the video gives us um, just different ways to think about even just one scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, it just yeah. provides a little bit more for, for everyone. So there was an upside um, that we got to have more video content to post. I'd say there's always an upside to that. So I just thought that was an interesting story because, you know, you're evoking some sort of emotion, which is great. So it definitely, uh, yeah, have provoked um, someone into. There's also this. We have the notification, so we can. So hopefully, no one will do that anymore, and they'll just un. They'll be like, "Don't unfollow." Yeah. <laughs> Follow Lori. Don't support <laughs> them as abusive. No, they're beautiful, um, and and I'm super inspired by them. That's why I keep bringing them up. So, what does your perfect world look like in the future? You know, if you had an absolutely perfect world, what does that look like to you, for you and your daughter and your family? Oh, perfect. So I guess for me, it's just being, um, I grew up with a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, like just every day sort of anxiety, fear about like, when's the next big trauma gonna happen or the next and even if it wasn't a what we will 
what we think of as a you know something traumatic in my little brain as it grew up it was you know they were big things so for me it's not really about perfection also my motto and i end every video is always with it's not about perfection it's about being conscious or it's about being conscious not perfect that's what mm -hmm. i try to stress so for me a perfect world is really just one where we feel safe yeah i think when people feel safe then they feel um more able to help and to be empathetic because they're not afraid that their needs aren't going to be met i know that i'm certainly more available emotionally and um in other ways when i feel safe and when i'm not afraid and when i'm you know feeling mindful so i just wish that people could have that kind of peace in in their lives you know to feel like their needs are met and to feel safe to feel a sense of um what's the opposite of fear like not love but just safe, like just safe safe yeah it, it, i think so powerful. many people grow up without without a confident sense of, of safety yeah, yeah confidence I think confidence is so, um, for me, it feels more, and this is my own stuff, totally, but it feels more ego-based. Yeah. Whereas safe for me is a basic need. Mm -hmm. Not that I think confidence isn't a basic need, but in the way I um, sort of perceive it, I think that, that just takes precedence over that, over everything for me. Yeah. That's beautiful. Love it. And anything else that, you know, you, you want to share with our audience within, within that, within your work um, or within, you know, your, your future I endeavors? Think this, it, I want to take, I hope that thing that summits and events like this take um, the pressure off parents to be mm -hmm. perfect. We want to be emotionally available for our kids, but we're never going to be you know, perfect. Um, but if we can just uh, shift to taking that judgment off of ourselves, mm -hmm. for me, I think then we have a, a lot easier time looking at our kids with that, that compassion. I mean, just like what I was saying before, um, that's my, that's my mission. My goal is just to help parents Feel, it's so funny feel confident like confidence I say isn't like a, a major need but yet that is actually what another you know I want to help parents feel calm and confident yeah you know, I think, confidence I think is the, really important actually the word it, you know it can be perceived as a bit egotistical but I think there's a it's the power of it and it's okay to have um, the delicate balance again so it's okay right, to and we need it obviously the confident parent right we need we need that but in my perfect world, that's where I was really referring to. But confidence right. is important. It absolutely, feeling, um, you know, ah, what is, what is, com what, okay? is confidence? what makes up confidence for you? Because now I'm really diving into the word, I think, more, more than I have. But what is that, what does confidence really represent? Well, I think that confidence allows us to take the right and the wrong out of what we're doing so that we can confidently move move from moment to moment so as opposed to kind of saying i'm a libra so i have a hard time with quick decisions right so and there we go so so within that my my confidence comes through with every time i do an interview i put up my rainbow and i'm confident in that choice because i love the rainbow and you know it, it it's something that um i have made a conscious decision on and I confidently have um, stuck to it right so in a parenting aspect um, I've talked to certain parents that they don't they try not to worry and instead of taking that energy of worryment they actually have come up with a plan right the plan's not perfect and things change but they are confident in that plan yeah. whether it goes straight up or it goes zigzag or it goes into a rainbow whatever so i think the confidence just allows us to wake up every morning and say this is what i would like to have happen i am i am on board with these things and it also gives us the grace to be able to be flexible and if things go haywire we also can confidently still support in ourselves and our children yeah. that how's that i love it i love it i never really you know even 
sometimes I take words for granted and, or, or like these words that we use to describe. And I guess I just needed to dive into that one a little bit. More. I'm glad you did because no one else has asked. So yeah, like I, I think that's really, um, it's so interesting and confidence, like the belief, like being like that, take the belief that you can take action even like it's all wrapped up, you know, it's kind of like circular. It's all wrapped up in there, but I guess for me, confidence is like, yeah, like I believe what I'm, sh what I'm doing and what I'm sharing. And that means that I can, or, you know, what I want to accomplish so I can take action doing it. There's so much wrapped up in that. I think for parents, can I say this? Do we have time? Yeah, of course. Um, if they can have the belief and the confidence that their kids, no matter how they are acting, um, are doing exactly what nature intended. Mm. They're responding to their environment. Now we may need to teach them how to grow their tolerance. Um, maybe we need to make a stronger connection or maybe we need to give them, you know, more tools, action plan for that stress relief to help them build skills or regulate. But wherever they are, if we can just like believe that we are doing um, that just by connecting, just by watching events like this, that we're really doing the best for them. I think it's important for parents just to know that your kids are doing exactly what they, you know, are supposed to be doing. Yeah. How can we, how can we look at them and address their needs and, you know, support them in those ways instead of thinking that they're doing, that we're doing something wrong and they're not behaving right. Right. Like stuck in those patterns. Like they're yeah. wrong and what am I doing wrong? Like, no. And that's where it comes from. You know, I've, I've come up with kind of this idea of the care circle. So, you know, you take care of yourself and then you take care of your friends and family. And then guess what? You let them take care of you. So even as a parent, you know, you're looking at this child and like, there's so much for us to learn from children because they are, are unfiltered, right? So it's that cyclical, you know, they get, hey, Lori, how's my hair today? Like, it's okay? You know, that, that kind of thing. Now, I'm confident in my hair, but sometimes I need a little feedback from my friend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think parents um, allowing themselves that grace of, like, my kid's awesome and talks a little funny sometimes, but, like, this is all nature's way. So I love that what you said. That's a, it's a, great, it's a great reminder, right, of what, all the work we're doing here. Yeah, especially with all the judgment and advice and, you know, that's out there <laughs> that parents can, you know, sort of take on. So, definitely. Yeah. So, in, in that realm, free gift for the crowd? Yeah. Yeah. So I have, um, it's an audio and transcript. So, some people like to, actually, there might be, yeah, it's just, a, it's an audio. It's a webinar, but there's, it's audio. Um, I'm, a, I'm one of those people who like love having the transcript with the audio or having subtitles like I'm a huge subtitle fan yeah, so, so so yeah. this so we have so it's not a um, video it's like there were there were some slides but it's so it's basically just an audio so there won't be subtitles but audio and transcript if you don't awesome. like to sit there and listen you can just skim and read um, but it's called five ways to set limits without being unkind or punitive so I you will have the link for that so your audience can um, grab that transcript if they want for free. It's a 40 minute class if you do listen to it. Um, cool. but the transcript is there as well for everybody and a 10% discount on the on the cards. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll post the code on the site under the video. So that's awesome. And we'll, we'll post the links for both. Yes. All right. So anything else before we wrap up? I, I, before I let you answer that, thank you so much for your time. I, I'm so inspired by how you have creatively tackled, um, you know, that this, there's a lot of advice out there. There's a lot of techniques and I am a huge, um, I'm a huge fan of the creativity and making a kind of a game, you know, so that I'm talking about the card specifically, but just your messaging and all is thank beautiful. You. Thank yep. you for, for having me, for sharing the message. For me, communication is so, I think we can change so much mm -hmm. about the future of, of, you know, our kids' future and where we are headed as a society if we just shift the way that we talk to each other. So I'm really grateful that you invited me here to be, to be part of your thing. 
Yeah. And thank you for, for being here. Love it. Very much appreciate it.